Groundbreaking news for the gold and silver sector. The prospect of Europe going back to a gold standard? Some people say there's a secret plan to have just that happen. But what evidence do we have? And most importantly, you likely own some silver and gold. What would it mean for the value of your precious metals? Let's start by talking about our friends in Poland. They've made it very clear. Actually, their central banker not too long ago stated that holding gold is a wise decision for Poland. Why? Because if the lights go out or there's any type of economic catastrophe, gold will be the go-to asset. And we've witnessed lately as Poland has been buying more and more gold. But what about this secret plan? What else can we look at? How about our friends in Holland? Yes, the Dutch. Look, in a recent a television interview, the central banker uh, of Holland explicitly said that it's a good idea for the Dutch to hold a lot of gold. Again, for the same reasons. It's been a timeless store of value. It's a great insurance policy. But that's not where this supposed potential secret plan to return Europe to the gold standard really gets its feet. What people are very confused by or very perplexed by when they look at what's going on in Europe is the fact that when you compare the GDPs of a lot of the major European economies, Germany, Italy, Spain, and you compare the size of the economies of those countries individually relative to their gold holdings, they all own about 4% worth of their annual GDP in physical gold. Is that just a coincidence? Or could it be proof that we could be heading toward a gold standard in Europe? Let me read this to you from a recent article from Gainesville Coins. It said the Polish Central Bank has bought more than 300 tons of gold in recent years to bring its gold to GDP ratio in line with the average in the Eurozone, which remember, stands at about 4%. For medium and large economies in the Eurozone, to which Poland might be included in the future, an equal monetary gold to GDP ratio is, quote, a covert requirement for nations to be prepared for a shift to a new gold standard. Based on these requirements, this author, Jean Nubinhoz, expects Poland to buy an additional 130 tons of gold. It's irrefutable that there are secret agreements between nations in the Eurozone to align gold reserves relative to GDP to be prepared for a new gold standard or gold price targeting system. For Poland to be included in the Euro area, it has to match its gold to GDP ratio with the Eurozone average. So what we're seeing across Europe, again, is that the major economies hold the equivalent of 4% of their GDP in gold. And people are speculating that that could signal that at some point we could see a gold-backed or a return to a gold standard type system in Europe. First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada. Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet, located in Quebec, each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. And what about the Dutch? The author goes on to say that last month, a representative of the Dutch Central Bank confessed in an interview that the Dutch National Bank holds gold worth about, you guessed it, 4% of its GDP, which it, has, uh, which it has brought in line to the position of France, Italy, and Germany. Bear in mind, the Eurozone does not control the price of gold. 
and thus their goal to GDP ratios. But there's a desire to harmonize these ratios throughout the Eurozone as illustrated in the chart below, which basically shows that the major economies of the Eurozone are holding 4% of their GDP in gold. The prospect of the Eurozone moving to a gold-backed currency, a gold standard, would be very exciting for any silver and gold investor. Those of us who know, right, the timeless value of silver and gold. But if we broaden the scope beyond just the Eurozone and consider what's going on in the rest of the world with the BRICS countries, with the six additional countries that are joining the BRICS as of January 1st, 2024, it becomes very interesting to think about the role that gold and silver will play in the monetary future of the country. Hey, if you want to get your hands on some gold or silver before all these central banks gobble it up, go check out Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. They're an online bullion dealer, sponsor of Ron's Basement. They make this video possible, but it's also where I go when I want to buy silver. Look, I learned about the company from one of you, one of the basement dwellers. Several of you actually recommended I check them out. I did my homework. I trust them, and I always feel like I get the best prices. Check out Pimbex. Throw them in the mix next time you're looking to buy some bullion, and I think you'll find what I found. Pimbex is best. It's going to be an interesting ride as we move into... 2024. Whether we look at it from the perspective of individual states in the United States, which are furthering legal tender legislation, if we look at what's going on in the Eurozone with central banks holding and adding to their gold reserves, and if we broaden the scope to the entire planet, which has a growing alliance of new countries, the BRICS and the six countries joining the BRICS, all of which place a high level of importance onto precious metals, who knows what 2024 could bring. We know one thing for sure. No matter what happens, we'll ride the storm out knowing that silver and gold are timeless stores of value. Hey, thanks for joining me here in the basement. Please come back. Please subscribe to the channel. I will put out a new piece of content every single day for the rest of my life. I want you to feel welcome here because you are welcome here and I'll see you soon.